Okay, folks, we're at page 12 of gases today, and we're talking about gas mixtures. So when you are breathing air, you are not actually breathing pure oxygen. You're breathing a mixture of gases, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and several others. So we need ways to deal with mixtures of gases. And John Dalton has given us a good way of dealing with that, Dalton's Law says that the total pressure, P total, exerted by a gas is the pressure of the first gas added to the pressure of the second gas added to the pressure of the third gas, etc., 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 up until whatever gas N is how many gases that we have. Now, mathematically, there's a fancy way of writing this. P total equals the sum from I equal 1 to N of P sub I. Okay? May have seen that in your math classes. Now, the pressure that you feel on your body right now, called atmospheric pressure, is not the result of just the nitrogen or just the oxygen. It's the result of all of those gases exerting pressure on you. Collisions. Collisions of nitrogens and oxygens and argons and CO2s and all that. Okay? So what we can actually say is that total pressure equals the total number of moles times RT over V. So this is an implication that it actually doesn't matter what the gas molecules are. It just matters how many of them there are in exerting pressure. And that's important to know. Now, we also have something new to introduce here, which is called a mole fraction. And that is the Greek letter chi. You can look that up, chi, C-H-I. OK? Now. The mole fraction of I is just that, it's a fraction. You take the number of moles of I, divide it by the moles total, and you have a fraction. It will always be less than one. Mole fraction. And when you add up the mole fractions of all the individual gases, it will equal one. Okay, now, we're gonna be looking at an experiment that involves collecting water, I'm sorry, collecting gas over water. So imagine that we have a pneumatic trough of some type, big tub full of water, and we have inverted into it a gas collection tube, fancy name udiometer. It's full of water, the water stays in because it's upside down, kind of like a barometer works. And now you take a tube and stick it in there, some source of gas, you let it bubble through. And as it bubbles up there, it pushes the water level down really, really low, okay? Now, that gas, let's just pretend it was hydrogen for these purposes. That gas is called a wet gas. It is a wet gas because it has water vapor in it. In addition to the hydrogen bubbles coming up, a tiny amount of the water that was in this tube in the liquid form vaporized. That is often referred to as the vapor pressure of water. So the total pressure inside of that tube is the pressure of the hydrogen gas and the pressure of the water, called the vapor pressure of water. Okay, now we are probably only interested in the vapor pressure of the hydrogen. So we read the barometer on the wall, get the total pressure. We look for the temperature generally just a thermometer into this tub of water, 
find out what the temperature is, look up the vapor pressure of water at that temperature, and subtract it off, and it will be a pretty small amount, but it's enough to make a difference. Okay? So now, you did collect gases in the past uh, over water, which is kind of cool. You did uh, nitrogen and oxygen and hydrogen, uh, carbon dioxide, okay? But you can't collect all gases over water. Two that come to mind immediately for me are ammonia and HCl, both of which are very, very water soluble, okay? And because of that, they would just dissolve in this and never make it up there. Carbon dioxide, to a small extent, will dissolve a little bit in water, but nothing compared to NH3 and HCl. Both of these are polar molecules, and water is a polar solvent. So what we uh, would do in the classroom is called the ammonia fountain demo. You can go view one on YouTube right now, and I think you'll understand what it is we're talking about. You'll see just how soluble that is. And if you've ever come to one of our uh, Faraday lectures in the holiday season, we typically do that every year. Okay, so mathematically, hydrogen gas is collected by water displacement until the pressure in the gas collection tube matches the atmospheric pressure of 755 torr, or 25 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure of the hydrogen in this tube? Given the vapor pressure of water, it's 23.76 at this temperature. So, the pressure of the hydrogen would equal the total pressure minus the vapor pressure of the water, which will equal 755 torr minus 23.76 torr. Pretty small amount, okay? Round it off to sig figs, 731 that's really all it is to it okay now maybe we want to go into something just slightly more complicated what mass of water is present in a sample of wet nitrogen collected at 35 degrees 735 torr in a 250 milliliter container the vapor pressure of water at 35 degrees is 42.18 okay all I'm concerned with is the water. I can just forget about the fact that there's nitrogen in there. So if PV equals NRT, N equals PV over RT, and the pressure of the water is 42.18 torr. That's a vapor pressure of the water. So the volume was 0 0.2500 liters. For R, I'm going to use 62.4 because the pressure was in Tor. And then the temperature, 35 degrees, will be 308 Kelvin. All right. Tor is gone. All right. So liter, I'm, I miswrote that. Liter Tor per mole Kelvin. So sorry about that. All right. Liter, liter. Okay, Kelvin, Kelvin. This gives me, wow, a tiny amount, 5.49 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of water. The AP exam actually asked people to do that one year. Okay, so multiply that by the molar mass of the water. 18.02 grams per mole. And we got 0 0.0099 grams of water. So what I was hoping to illustrate to you with that is that it's not a lot of water. It really isn't, okay? But it is a measurable amount. That water will be present. Okay, that's it for page 12.